Hey everyone, this is the Unstoppable Blueprint Podcast. I have my good friend Annie Cho from ARC and Co with me today. We're going to be talking about a lot of really cool things to, well, help you become unstoppable in your business and talking about leadership, talking about branding and your personal brand. Without, uh, without giving it all away, I want to introduce Annie. And, and Annie, tell us about what you do to give a bit of context for today's podcast. Well, thanks for having me, James. What a pleasure to be on your show. Um, my friend. Yeah, um, I met James. Well, both of us are entrepreneurs uh, for many years. Both of us have a really solid life experience Mm. uh, working with other leaders or people that would like to be leaders and we help people grow, right? So we share that similarity. So my work um, primarily focusing on helping people promote um, their their brand. So as you know, you know, 2023, there are billion brands out there, billion brands selling products. So how can we help brands amplify themselves, right? How can we help business owners figuring out their own voice and their own brand's voice? And then, you know, taking that and then distill it into some kind of marketing messaging mm-hmm. or brand messaging and then help them create what we call a customer journey. Customer journey is what is very, very important when it comes to create a very memorable experience. So the brand, you know, it's, it's memorable to their target audiences. And that itself is a very, it's almost like a scientific formula. So we help people understand first that this exists because a lot of people didn't think that brand is a, is relatively, yeah, a very yeah. important yeah important element to uh, be a part of the uh, business success. So we primarily work with uh, VP of sales, VP of marketing, and uh, brand managers to really, um, you know, support them and then help them grow. So in that sense, I share that similarity with the Unstoppable Blueprint. Very cool. Share that with James. (laughs) <laughs> and it's it's uh it's 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 interesting because a lot of people they start doing the doing or start a business or start leading a business think oh, we just got to talk about a business we just got to talk about what we do or or even how we help people well yes but it, it need it needs a lot more than that especially if you want to stand out and have people instantly see why you're different and choose you over anyone else or whether the competition or something totally different I think it's it's very important and I've learned that and a lot of people learn that the hard way as well Annie. Uh, I find it's it's important. That's why people. I mean, Apple is just a software company. It's just a phone company. Nike is just a, they make shoes. That's all they do. Big That's deal. Right. Yet I people know. line up for days. In it, it blows my yeah, mind. Yeah, days and no, events. Brought, yes, you brought a really, really, really important point. Is that they understand number one who they're targeting, right? Who they are actually speaking to. They figure out they're they they have an audience. So, you know, when brands come to us and said, oh, we want to target everybody, I usually just tell them, um, um, that's very broad. And unless you have $10 billion marketing budget and advertising budget, you really need to narrow down the market. And because then you know where to focus on, right? So that itself is, uh, yeah, it takes a long time. It's a journey itself to understand that part. This is true. Um, and helping helping these uh, leaders learn right that oh wow i need to really narrow down to uh who i'm talking to then figure out a strategy or how to speak to them right right on right on how how do you help people because often people say you know i don't even know who i want to market to i i this is what i do i'm a, i'm a plumber i'm making this up i'm a plumber i'm a whatever i'm a software developer i'm a you know coach of some sort or whatever it is and they're like, well, I, I like doing this. I like doing the plumbing or the electrician or the, the coaching or the business consulting, but I don't really know who I want to work with. I, I like working with everyone. And to your point, unless you want to go broke and be very ineffective with your marketing language and your, your, your pitch, you need to, to, to find a niche and a, a specific yeah. person you, you, you help or specific business you help and, and with their pains, with their concerns, their desires. Yeah. What do you tell people who, who aren't sure about that? Because there's even big companies who aren't sure who the heck the customers are or who they want to market to. Yeah, I mean, every, every, every business has a pain point, right? And um, I think that they will first understand, you know, the, there will be signs that, you know, of these pain points. Number one, uh, maybe they're not making as much money as before. Mm-hmm. 
Number two, they're seeing a lot of competition coming out that doing the exact same thing they're doing. Uh, or number three, um, they're not, they're being called, you know, they're outdated um, or they're, they're just simply, you know, losing the game, right? Basically yeah. overall. They see that from sales, right? Sales is a direct reflection of that. Or they're that. seeing that they're not getting the, follow, the following they want. Right. Or they're not, let's say they go to a buyer, um, you know, let's say, uh, you know, we have a lot of clients that work with uh, like Whole Foods, for example, like a grocer and the buyers will be very straight up to them and say, you know, you're neither your products or your, your brand is strong enough. Well, I'm, you know, I'm being sent like a thousand other product every single day. What makes you special, mm -hmm. right? You're saying that, right? What makes you special? What is your unique selling proposition? You know, and we always we always tell clients to not talk about their product right away. You know, it's easy to talk about your product. Oh, I right, do this. I sell. I sell this. Oh, like I, I sell yogurt. Yeah. But, you know, nobody really wants to know that before they know who you are. OK, why do you sell yogurt? Right. Why do you why are you into wellness? OK, then you talk about the story that itself is a brand. Right. You don't right. talk about yogurt. You talk about smoothie. Right? You talk about what 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 drove that ambition to start a company or what is the brand's mission statement to help people to be you know in you know paying attention to like wellness or to care about their health that's the brand not the not the product right because like when you have when you have your audience when you have your product then you have your sale well most people don't know that it's it's like that saying i, I heard um it, people don't buy your what your what like your product or or your features they buy your why they buy why you do it like oh you know grandma used to make this yogurt or grandma used to make this soup it was passed down generations it's all natural it's got grandma's love in it and and this and this and that um there's even a, a really cool soup uh company in toronto called Ma ma's best soup and uh, toronto and gta yeah. ma's best and it's it's a man exactly. that's their story oh grandma was doing it and the, then the exactly. grandson helped her market it and create his big business now the multiple absolutely locations. because yeah. the important i think the six what makes a brand successful yeah sure the product could be good but all yep. they need is to to pass that bar you know to meet the bar the rest is an emotional connection you have to be emotionally connected to your audience and how do you do that? It's through mm. marketing, right? Through branding, through marketing, through uh, multiple different social media channels. So how do you make sure that that messaging is really loud and clear, right? Because like I said, right, there's so many brands out there screaming in our lives every single day. You know, there's social media all over. There's TikTok, you know, there's like IG, there's like a billion channels, right? Everybody is like a news anchor now. So how can we stand out from that loud noise and then tell mm -hmm. people that, hey, we actually, we really do care. And then this is why we care, right? That's all, that's all I do. That's all we do as like a company, but we've been doing that since 2011. And I'm really happy to say that um, it really, we really managed to um, support the brands and clients that we promised to support. And then they have, you know, there's a lot of them are still with us after, you know, eight years, 10 years, yeah, that's something I, I take pride with for sure. I love it. Yes, hell yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because you're right. They, they, the. I think one of the most important things, out is to is to answer the question, why do I care? Why would I care? Like, okay, you sell shoes, or you yeah. sell a cologne, or you sell software, or servers, or consulting, or whatever. Okay, why why do I care? And I think you your brand message, from what I'm hearing, is really helping you answer that and and helping you answer why we do it better or cooler or faster or like Walmart cheaper, which is yeah. is not a game I want to play, but again, cheaper or better or faster or or more longer term success than anyone else. I think it's answering yeah, that question. But, but even Walmart, they have a very complex brand uh, appearance too, right? Yes, so true. For example, they deliberately want to, uh, you know, have that quote unquote more affordable look and feel, right? So you go into Walmart and they do like fluorescent light. It's very like blue and white, right? They did it on purpose, right? And then they chose, you know, their brand palette, for example, it's very blue, very red, very white, you know, it has like a, it, they're reflecting their target audiences, mm -hmm. like, you know, life, everyday life. And then they, they make sure that, oh, wow, we can be really part of them. We don't, we don't, seem like we're an alien from these people speak their language you know 
Well, you look at like a Dodge, Ram, you know, Chevrolet or Jeep, right? Their ad is, oh, there is a target audience to it versus let's say BMW mm -hmm. or Porsche, right? They understand who they're targeting and then they do everything they can to create that, that little, uh, we call it like a, a, a the, the, the zone, the community, right? The community that these people actually hang out. So then it's no longer just like, hey, here's a car. That you drive no you're representing a community you're representing True. a lifestyle or representing your vision or what makes yep. you a better person you got it you know, living in this world right? like that big truck the big manly whatever whatever truck yeah. or, or fit womanly whatever depending on what it's designed for right and that you like i said lifestyle the emotion the it's an expression of you it becomes an expression well and that way if it's the expression of you people yes. will pay a lot of money for it they'll overpay for it and make an iphone in my opinion <laughs> People will pay anything that they believe they're part of. Mm. You know? Tell us more so about this that. is what the magic is. One uh, you know, like we were, you were saying earlier, how did Apple become so successful? Is they started working on their brand way early, like mm. 80. You know, they were Steve Jobs was like the visionary that understood what he needed to focus on, right? Instead of, oh, I'm gonna develop these products. Products are what we call a touch point, right? Mm. A brand has a lot of physical touch points. And, you know, as a design team that we create these experiences using these touch points and engage with the, with their audience, right? Steve Jobs understood this all along. So that's why they created the value. You know, value is such a big word for every brand, every, every company. Sure. And I'm, you know, as designers, uh, we obviously appreciated his visions because, you know, uh, he was the pioneer. Then because of him, because of Apple, a lot of brands started to, you know, pay attention and started to, you know, spend money yeah. to invest into you know quote unquote brand or you know otherwise you know uh branding it's such a it's a very um it's a, it's a it's it's a vocabulary that only you know designers or, or marketers would know in the past right let's say in the 90s but now 2023 everybody knows like you know branding you know you need to work on your brand you know yeah. it's like everybody understand what that language means right what um thank you for that one um mm -hmm. talk to us now about personal because again there's personal brand there's business brand whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you work in a big company talk to us a bit about personal brand because that, i think that's something important i mean any business leader or entrepreneur talk to us about that and, and why the heck that's important well it is very important because we live in a world that um you know unfortunately uh we we are not products but people a lot of people have no no uh you know everybody has attention a very short attention span now mm. people are not spending enough time to understand others so when especially when it's a business okay let's say um, if you're operating a business um, and then you're a business owner it's very important for you to understand who you want to attract right that's a personal brand level right if you how how can you align yourself with the people you want to attract to that is a personal brand right and everybody we, we, we play a role um, in our life every single day the role of a daughter, role of a father, right? And then to our clients, the role of a, of a leader, of a, of a coach, right? Say you are a coach, right? How can we create that image? That's a, that's a personal brand, right? How do you do that? Then obviously you create, you know, you also have to create experience of how people are engaging with you, mm. right? Just like what we're doing here. So for example, when, when my company, you know, sort of, working with you on, you know, uh, helping our clients grow, you have these, uh, you know, leadership coaching class that you offer to our clients that built you as an expert of your industry, right? Yeah. People need to understand that. And then, you know, and what, what comes with it, right? Obviously your knowledge in this field and you have a very kick-ass website that you tell people a lot of these tips of how to become you know, an unstoppable business owner, right? Yeah. That is all you did. That, you know, obviously on top of that, you wrote books. Again, that propel yourself as an expert, right? We all need to do that. Um, so obviously that's also why I um, I got really intrigued by you because you did exactly what I want to do. Okay. <laughs> you cool, just cool. Had, wrote a book, started a podcast. <laughs> you know? you're just a, you just did everything I wanted to do. <laughs> too funny, too funny. I got to put some of my... Uh... My, my TV interviews up there too. People see the logos and the different, but then they're like, I'm clicking on it and I can't see it, which I guess clearly they, some people are interested in seeing what I said in my interviews on. So it's, it's saying it's important and mm -hmm. we're creating like that, that social proof, which helps with 
with your 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 influence, your persuasion, your your brand strength. That's what is a social proof. Oh well, you know James is an author. Or James has been interviewed on TV, or James wrote these articles, or James did this and that, or book, or whatever. I think it's in, interesting and important, like you said, to have that that social proof. Uh, you know, to create brand strength as well. Yeah. So there are multiple brands. You know, on, on multiple different level, right? Our, ourselves and then you know the role that we're playing so you know I think it comes down to understand knowing who we are you mm. know that's number one right yes. be very clear of who we are and what we're trying to do what, what do we what do we bring this world uh, how can we contribute then from that figure out the purpose you know purpose to me is everything um, you know mm. I'm glad that we are talking here because um, I think that we're very fortunate to be understanding our purpose this age you know sure. a lot of people probably don't figure out for the rest of their life but sure. right sure. now i think we are two people that understood why we are uh you know in this world that we're part of a bigger you know mission yeah. to help people grow right, right people yeah. friends you know and then they also understand that and they in terms help others grow that's how the world will become a better place this is why i'm here Right. right on. Well, correct. You're yeah, to tell me my purpose, I like you that said. You're like, uh, you're yep. like I agree. Right on. My purpose is to help others. Exactly. Help others. Help business owners. Speaking of business owner, business owners and business leaders. So, speaking of those, what have you seen over the years that the most successful business leaders, business owners have done? What's really propelled? Because you've worked with a lot of people. What's what's been some factors that have really propelled them to success? What have you observed in them? Is mm -hmm. it personalities is it traits is it is it doing something or is it refraining from doing something that's really seemed to make people successful oh definitely yeah that's a super good question well they're highly organized first of all they have a big vision so i think literally on top on, in the three seconds you asked me i could figure out three uh, personal traits is number one they're they're very bold mm. risk taker risk right? understand it they're like okay i have a vision I know what I want to be, and then here's how I'm going to do it, right? And then, obviously, um, being able to take the action is one. Because sometimes you can think about something, an idea for, like, 10 years. You can do Most anything. people do. <laughs> yeah, and then you just, like, let it hang there, and, you know, life just goes away. You know, we live once, right? So right. that's uh, that's number, you know, obviously, the first few steps to become a very successful entrepreneur is that you got to start doing it. <laughs> you have yeah. to make a commitment of this, right? But that goes with like, you know, even with uh, like personal fitness goal, right? Oh. Or, um, you know, like a New Year's resolution. It's like, okay, what am I going to do this year? How am I going to make it happen, right? So being able to organize and plan, you know, and follow through, right? That's, that's super important uh, personal trace that must, it's like a must have. I agree. I agree. I think it's even, I think it was Warren Buffett or someone said that, yeah, the, the top traits of the most successful people in the world are they're decisive and they, they take risks mm -hmm. and they take action. Like, like you're saying, Annie. Yeah. So it's uh, the three things uh, you just, it's even uh, not just entrepreneur, um, you know, um, every, every leader high, uh, high up in executive levels in every company said you have to be able to do that in order to lead people. Can you imagine a leader that is indecisive? So what's other, what are other people going to do to sit there and wait for you? But no. They'll be indecisive too. They'll, they'll learn that from the leader. We <laughs> learn nothing's going to get done. That's the problem if, you know, and then, and then nothing is, is going through. Um, just, yeah, it won't, it won't move. Like a, if you're operating a machine, right? You got to make sure all the gears are working. So then you have to make sure you are, you, you understand how it functions and how to make it work. So you have to have a vision too. Right on. And, and then that way everyone can see, because no, if no one knows where the hell you're going, how are they going to, it's like a car with tires that are misaligned, the tires pointing different directions. Yeah. And like, how, if they don't know where you're going, well, I'm going to do this, this is why. And then someone else is doing yeah. that and pulling left and someone's pulling right. Someone's pulling the Absolutely. car backwards. Someone's pushing it forwards. But they don't know the vision. Absolutely. So community. being a leader is so important. It's like, number one, you, you trust the people you hire. You don't micromanage them because if you hire the right people, you, you need to let them do the work. Yeah. Yeah. And the leader themselves have to understand uh what they're dealing with you know number one they have to be in tune with them, themselves all the time they have to be mentally healthy physically healthy in order to True. you know be be there for people right make the right decision and understand the scope of everything right if they don't then 
they're not gonna be able to reach their goal and then they will not be in very good state very soon so i think that yeah. in a leader their their mental you know mindset has to be basically always there and that yeah that, that requires a lot of commitment because you know how can you alleviate all this stress in life stress is everybody has stress now you need to be able to, to battle that right yeah. who doesn't have that right so being able to understand that and you know it comes down to uh, understand your you know themselves we don't understand ourselves <laughs> we're, we're not clear you're in not going to go yeah we're going to yeah. make a bunch of like bad decisions therefore you know basically go downhill from then so we shouldn't do that right, right on. <laughs> well, there's even that saying that a, a confused mind won't buy uh -huh. so avoid confusing your customers be clear and a confused mind doesn't sell so be clear yourself <laughs> if you want it's people to buy from you whether always. it's you or hiring you or buying your thing whatever always. it is always yeah so I think our world today, the more noisy it gets, the more yes. calm everybody needs to be. You know, we need to stay as calm as possible to understand, you know, okay, process all the information. Not every not everything's noise, right? But what is a really important piece of information yeah. that people need to take in instead of like just like get rid of, right? And right. that is something that um at least um their the medias are now uh, focusing on. Right. They're saying like, you know, the media used to be very toxic, you know, but this year, a lot, at least I'm seeing that on social media that uh, people are promoting media as therapy. Cool. You know, that's good. Media can, media cannot go, uh, you know, obviously fake news or, or toxic yeah. message, true, you know, true. but now we, they, you know, it's a tool really. And it's people who's using it for and people who's receiving the information. As long as there's that awareness, I do believe that um, media can indeed become therapeutic. I agree. I agree. I think it can be really good for people. It can break like any, it's a tool. It's like, it's like money. I mean, money is not bad. Money is not good. It's, it's a tool, right? Just like social media and, and media in general, it, it can help us lift us up. It can make us money. It can tear us down. What would you say, just to tie our conversation now, what would you say maybe the, the last either tip or two, or because you've worked with companies large and small, what are what are a couple of the things that you've seen companies do or if you want to discuss a mistake or two i'm i'm happy to hear that big mistakes that have caused companies to ha to lose lots of money whether the big or small companies and maybe a, a top thing you've seen companies or organizations again big or small do that really helps them win well that's a really good question james um there are companies that come to us and this is the typical ask oh we need this next week can you guys do this for me right now? Oh, we need, this is, uh, we're, we're really late. Um, can you guys give, provide like a band-aid solution? It's you might, ask, you know, I, I, I honestly just tell them, listen, like, this is a waste of money. You don't, you might as well not do it. You know, spend another year or spend another six months and plan this properly. Mm. Last minute band-aid solution is not going to work. <laughs> because you're gonna throw it out after a month Correct. or two yeah. you're gonna spend all these resources already knowing oh it's a bad you know it's like a band-aid solution then why are you doing it or you're doing it because oh maybe uh, other people are doing it you're doing it because maybe your boss told you to or you're doing it because there's you know peer pressure but whatever it is you already know it's bad and why are you wasting time and money and resources on it right yeah. these are what is honestly very common um we get weekly requests and you know for someone like me um of course right as a business owners we always you know we want to work with everybody but we have to be able to understand assess the situation under and knowing that hey this is not the situation we want to be getting into because you know the project is not going to be successful why would you commit to something that not won't make you look good and throw money right? at some half ass exact or exactly having not look good or look bad because it is band-aid or half ass yeah exactly. and then i don't want i don't want the clients to come back to me and say hey this solution stuck you you guys are not good so um i would just say um no to be very honest um uh, it's because it was it wasn't planned properly to begin with so we became you know you know at least for the past five six years very selective of um, the type of people and the type of projects that we take on. 
because um, yes, at the end of the day, of course, the, the world isn't perfect, but the, the person that hires us need to really understand that, okay, you know, like I said earlier, like where they are, where they, where they want to be and what is, you know, what's, what is, what is wrong right now with their company? How can I fix it? Have proper strategy and proper planning. Do not have bandage solution. So that, that is a lot of the uh, problem with big companies. Okay, I hmm. think Tell small companies, um, they don't have a lot of resources. They, they never do because they they always feel like, wow, I'm, I'm running behind on my launch, but then where is my, you know, where's my, like my funding? How can I fund this? Right. Mm. So that itself, in my opinion, we always tell people, okay, if your funds are resource, like your resources are limited, it's even more important to have a plan because you have to do things in phases or stages, but at least know that game plan to, to move forward with. Right. So if you don't have the funding, then at least, you know, you, for, for example, let's say, if you're a company that really cares about, you know, let's say if your brand is about um, uh, promoting a sustainable lifestyle, and then you suddenly decide that you're gonna have a lot of products or let's say your packaging or marketing uh, collaterals that go against the concept. So for example, uh, use a lot of like um, one-time use plastic or, you know, cause, cause quote unquote, you couldn't find a better solution to mm. work with your brand and you you basically just ruin your own brand right because oh because you, you don't you don't you didn't have enough time to plan this whole thing and then people won't believe you because you know you just said you're a, a sustainable lifestyle brand that promotes healthy you know a better world uh, uh you know uh, a healthier planet and then you just did all these things to um kind of like hit yourself yeah. Right? So that is something that you can clearly tell the brand wasn't there when they were planning. And as you know, as a as a small business owner, that's something that we really need to be careful of. Even you know, especially when their funds are limited. So you know, with big companies, yeah. they can make mistakes here and there, and then yeah, sure, they will waste some resources, but it will hurt more, right, for small businesses. True. It's yeah. like that. Thank you for that that point because it's it makes me think. Even what I teach, walk the talk. People will do 10% of what you say, you know, 90% of what you do. And, uh -huh. and we need to be congruent and authentic. I, I, I speak a lot on authentic leadership and authentic influence yeah. because you need to be real. If you're full of it, people are going to tell sooner or later. People will know, uh, like you said, the environmental whatever company that uses, I don't know, plastic or something or whatever, whatever the, the thing is, uh, or, you know, a company that says we do this, we stand for this, and then they do that, or their branding does this, or their, their employees do that, or their leaders do this when they say, no, we really mean this. It can kill uh, back in the, in the corporate days. I saw a lot of leaders do that. And, and when customers found out it would kill a customer relationships, when, when we as, as team members even found out, we saw a leader say they'll do one thing and they, they, they do another, or they said they wouldn't, we will never do this guys. Don't worry. We'll never do that. And they do it anyways. Instant loss of respect, exactly. influence, persuasion. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes like a small teams, right? Let's say if the company is small, but small mm -hmm. could be very powerful because it's easier to manage. So let's say if you have a small team of like six people, right, including a business owner, the people should really know the brand in and inside out. Like they would know and live and breathe that brand because they're so tightly, you know, together, you know, compared to like a big corporation. So being small isn't a weakness, it's always actually a really good strength. But knowing to, to have pro proper strategy is key to success is so important for small business and that's I what i say to like all of, all of the you know the entrepreneurs that that come to us right is actually plan and think about it and, and even though the plan is the first thing that gets thrown out the window in a war i, I agree it's plan again there's that saying if you fail to plan you plan to fail i mean it i, yeah. I you know I, it's, it's a little if they don't if they don't know how to do it they need to hire uh, consultants you know proper teams to well, exactly do it, it, com it like invest commit the right thing it's true. Commit, take action, decide, commit, invest, which usually is money, time, and energy. Commit, invest. Otherwise, if you're just doing the doing, you're doing the bare minimum, you're going to get the bare minimum results and likely go to exactly. business. So yes, it's scary. You know, I've been there too. Yes, invest, especially during scarce times, you know, scary times, harsh times, invest. That's when you need to invest most. 
And yes, it's scary as hell. And you need to do it anyways, if you want to be successful and if you're committed. And that's what I think, Annie, I don't you, I think that's what separates the 5% of wildly successful people to the 95% of people who are dreamers, wishers, hopers, they really want it. But again, how committed are they? That's my yeah, thought. They, and then I think that a lot of people underestimate how much work it, it takes to become sure. what that vision is. You know, sure. there's so much work involved and so much resources. And, and growth. People, yeah, to grow, right? And then I think a lot of people underestimate and they pay a huge price to it. Cool. And so why do that when they can avoid that, right? right Enough research is, in, is needed for sure. When, right they, when anyone wants to start a project or a company, they need to know what, you know, they need to do the, the, the work. Right? Well, and, and like you said earlier too, you need to know who you are, what you stand for. I mean, and, and do the work, but also do the inner work. And, and I, in, in, you and I talked about this a while ago during a, a conversation we had, it's, it's like almost work on yourself just as much, if yeah. not more than you work on the business, you know, it, absolutely. Cause they're buying you. They're, they're leading, you're leading them. It's you. It's, it's actually as important as um, the business. So when, when we first started a company mm -hmm. um, in 2011, we actually sat down and then make sure that we understand ourselves perfectly and knowing what our life vision is, you know, our personal goals, that the business actually could work, right? Because we're the people operating the business. Yeah. We need to make sure that it's still aligning. And then we have to check, you know, the alignment every single year. Right. And that a lot of business owners, they forget that became like the, the slave of the business yeah. and then they become unhappy. They yeah. become um, disconnected to their original vision. And that's when things start to become unbalanced. Um, you know, it's just, it's not healthy. So be an entrepreneur, unfortunately, uh, it ha it's, it's tough. You know, I, I don't understand why a lot of, uh, you know, I guess it's a marketing message. Some, some, some companies come up with, they say, everybody can be an entrepreneur. Everybody can have a business. I guess that's true, but uh, statistically said a lot, you know, 95% of business actually die within yeah. the first five years. Mm -hmm. That's why. It's a scary number too. It, it breaks yeah, my heart. They, just, they, they don't talk about that. It just, you know, oh, everybody can be a business. Of course, you know, with the resources we have nowadays, but do they understand what it takes to, to, you know, and sometimes it's, um, there's a lot of sacrifice that entrepreneurs have to do. Really? They don't know yeah. that. Being it's relentless. Yeah. <laughs> Being relentless yeah. and letting nothing stop you. And that's, that's why I'm here. And, and a lot of people do. We, it's that there's that, you know, 10 feet from gold story. Most people give up right before they're about to be wildly successful. And they just, they need to give that, that little more. So. Yeah. Being able to understand, you know, like what you 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 teach people how to be have that clarity. We we work with people like that, you know, who has a clarity. Now, okay, now that's planet. That's that's make sure you you actually become you know who you want to become, and then that if they become successful, empower them. Once that empowerment happens, they go and empower others. Right? Well, exactly, and that's why I love working with leaders, whether it's. A business leader, a business owner, uh, whoever it, it is that wants to be a leader, because to your point, you can, they can empower tons of people and it makes a, a massive, massive difference as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is why I think this gives that, you know, going back to that purpose, businesses and, and people, right? We all have our own purposes and then how, how can we all work together, right? No one, no one's, uh, no one's purpose is to ruin the world or make make the world a worse place. <laughs> no, exactly. Right. Exactly. So then, how how can we then work together to make make it better, right? It's true. It's true. And I that's, have, that's... you know, this this journey of being an entrepreneur is definitely one of the most, I would say, the best decision I've ever made for myself, um, without Ooh. even knowing it. You know, I I look back, I still. You know, I, I guess I was uh, I was quite naive to to want to do it, but I stuck to what I promised myself to do, and I'm still I'm still doing it. <laughs> I love it, and same, and it's like it's it's the like scariest and most amazing thing I've ever done. Yeah, you're right. Think, is yeah. starting the business. Yeah. Think, yeah, like um, getting um, you know, face that fear of uh, or uncertainties. Uh, most that's something I think a lot of entrepreneurs or actually 100% of entrepreneurs have to to get uh, to kind of cross you have to cross that off your list you know sure. fear of uncertainty is uh is you see that as uh, the pleasure of being free <laughs> you don't see that as fear you see that as opportunities yes 
Yeah, it's true. Always see things in different perspective. Yeah. Which is true. Which is true. A lot of world that. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I I always encourage people, you know, to try entrepreneurship, at least once in their life, because it helps them understand themselves a lot, and and fast. Yep. Yep. And it's, uh, it's like well, you you grow. A lot. <laughs> There's a saying I love. If you want to grow like never before, become an entrepreneur because because it requ- for you for you to succeed, it requires your growth. Uh, yes. And and wow, we ever become a different person. It's been yeah one of the most yeah, amazing yeah, things yeah. I've ever done. Absolutely, yes, yeah. amazing. This has been awesome. I got to have you back on. Talk about way more stuff. Talk about the mindset and and the personal stuff too behind this shifts. But I mean, for now, this has been amazing. Um, how can people reach you if they want to find out about brand and how to work and how to, how to have a powerful brand message and have their, their brand say, we're awesome. This is why you need to do business with us. How can people reach you, Annie? Oh, um, they can find me on LinkedIn, right? I'm Annie, last name C-H-O-U, LinkedIn. You know, my company's ARC and Co. It's A-R-C, M percent C-O. The website is A-R-C-A-N-D-C-O dot C-A. And you can find us everywhere on social media. We're there um, helping people grow every single day, every second of our lives. Very yeah. proud of it. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Well, thanks for this. This was a pleasure. Uh, as always, love talking with you, my friend. Thanks for helping me do what I love and giving some great information to some leaders out there. I appreciate you. Thank you. Likewise. We'll chat. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thanks for joining everyone. Talk Thank soon. You. Be unstoppable. <laughs>